Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to Vague Conflict, and this video has been a long time in the making. So you have the destroyer path, the cruiser path, and all kinds of paths in the game, and the one that I was blazing with this idea was battleships to battleships, battleships lead to specialists, and finally specialists lead to the ultimate auto farming specialist for tier 7 to help you auto farm your way through the dreadnought targets and help you get into tier 8. So, you have two possibilities with the fleet of enforcers I recommended people build if they were going to follow this tutorial path. And those were the enforcers, which you got by using Manifold Missile, ran the, yeah, Manifold Missile Rancors, along with Clay. And the end result is you get this fleet. Now, what can they do and what can they not do? Well, they, thankfully, they can do more than what they cannot do. And as you can see in the background, this is the target for the Altarian Paragon Battleship. And this is going to be one of the ships that I will be recommending primarily, and the average repair time for this fight for this fleet is 54 minutes at Mark 1. However, you can reduce that by increasing the level and adding a resistor onto the ships to just reduce the explosive damage you're taking as bleed through through the shields. You can also re um, replace the weapons if you actually want to take the time to use this fleet to farm for other weapons of their tier. You can use, you can destroy the bases of the Axis tier and obtain the Eclipse Driver. And the point of that would be simply to allow you to have a little bit more time and accessibility to weapons, but it also give you a very powerful weapon. But ultimately, your choice is entirely that, yours. The path you go down depends on exactly how you want to play. So if you follow this path, you're going to be going battleship to battleship, and then you're going to be transferring to from battleship to specialist, and then from specialist to specialist. Well, specialist to battleship, then to specialist. And what I mean by that is, this fleet cannot take on the ogre fleet, which I actually see as being required to farm, well, down the path that I'm working on and sharing, one of the paths anyways. I see the Ogre being necessary to farm for the Erico, and the Erico is the auto-farming ship that I want to be the ultimate lead to for this little series of tutorials. Because once you have that, you should be able to auto-farm most fleets, including the mark upgrades for them, so you can start mark upgrading them after you have a fleet of six of them and farm for the MERS. But all in due time. So exactly what is the point of what we're doing now? Well. The video for today is simply to break down the targets for the battleship to battleship warfare and which ones you can farm if you want to, and which ones you cannot farm with this fleet and which ones you could potentially farm with other fleets. So if you went down the destroyer path, you should be able to use them along with a decent net torpedo build or something like that, and you should be able to slow down the targets at a long range, hold them still, and pick them apart with shield bypass. Alternatively, if you don't and you want to take the repair time and log out take care of something else, you can use this path and you can more or less brunt force your way through the targets to a degree. And the reason I'm also making this video is because it's all guaranteed progression. And what I mean by this is that the targets have been changed so that all blueprint drops are now 100% guaranteed. And what I mean by that is every time you hit a target, you're going to be getting guaranteed blueprint um, parts. So thankfully, every time you hit a target, every time you win, you'll be gaining blueprints. So it's no longer a matter of beating so many and getting what you want. It's actually more of a matter of putting time in and you get to advance. And as you can see, the Pharmacon targets, due to their state, they're actually extremely easy to destroy, which is kind of sad, but also it makes it relevant to advance into now. So in case the development team ever decides to buff them, from what they are now. If not, well, you don't have to worry about this part of the tutorial and you can skip over. And the final portion will actually show exactly what happens when you try and take on the Ogre fleet with this fleet. And naturally, before I went in, I knew that the entire fleet was going to be wiped out and the intention of that was just simply to more or less show that you can't do it with the fleet unless you have a very specific um, timing. And even then, you're being outranged and outmaneuvered by the Ogres. And once they get the shields down of a single ship, well, that's going to be an issue because they'll be able to feed off that one until it's dead. Now, alternatively, we'll be advancing fairly steadily either way. Now, 
with this tutorial series, I'm going down a path entirely different from what I did, because I went down cruiser path and destroyer path, and I used the two in a mix, along with carriers. I didn't actually ever use battleships. And the tutorial I went with was the that you would farm for the Enforcer and its tech using the Manifold Rancors, as well as upgrade fleet commanders while you upgrade the fleet. And the point of that was simply to allow you to advance a little bit more quickly and a little bit more easily by having higher tier stuff and higher level stuff. And once you have said stuff, you should be able to farm a little bit more easily in certain parts. Such as, after you get the Paragon, you'll then be farming for the Zeus. And the reason for the Zeus is to farm for the Ogre, because it's the only ship that I know of that you can essentially just rush the target and gun them down. Which, thankfully, because of how they're built out, you should have no issues with. And because most of its um, overdrive is related to taking damage directly to the ship, and since the Ogres and stuff have shield bypass on them, you'll be taking a little bit more damage, you'll be a little bit more, you'll advance a little bit more easily. Well, you'll activate the overdrive a little bit more easily. And I know I'm chatting your ears off, and a lot of it might be confusing or not, or might not make sense. But I'll further explain it as the tutorials carry on. So, this is the fight where the ogres won, and what I wanted to do was I wanted to try and deal with one ogre at a time, but I mean, they come all at once, so there's not much you can do about that, so it's just a matter of destroying them. Fleet formation, it could have been much better, because I, I used the star formation, because I try and spread the ships out a bit, because the AoE damage from most of the ships in the fights, it just, it causes a great many issues. And the shields, they, at first I thought they were going to hold up a little bit more better, but they started to get hit by the phoenixes, and in this case, I should have actually focused fire the phoenixes, because they were the major issue there, because they started to destroy stuff, and the ogres started to feed off of the destruction of the ships, which in turn made them more powerful. So here, each and every single one of those phoenixes is the major issue. Had it been just the ogres, well, it wouldn't have been as bad, but still would have been an issue. So what can you take away from this? Well, don't be like me, don't attack the ogre fleets until you have something stronger than the tier 6 ships right here. But that's going to be it for this little set of videos. I'm going to be working on the next set soon, but that's going to be it. Be safe out in the void, happy hunting, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!